on Tutor Talks, we discuss Perkin Walbeck and Lambert Simnel. Welcome to Tudor. I hardly know her. Welcome to Marmalade Talk. We talk you know, about our favorite marmalades. This is probably why some of our guests can't tell you, or some of our listeners can't tell you and Garrett apart, is because we... You both have attractive st- voices. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we also do a lot of really stupid, stupid voices. We do. Uh, But... Actually, I'm both Garrett and Jeff. Shh. People don't know that. They're not supposed to know. Shh, quiet guy. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> You're all in on the secret. Uh, yeah. No, that's Jeff. Hello. Welcome to another episode of Tudor I Hardly Know Her. Uh, I'm Jeffrey. I'm Emily. And no Garrett. Boo. Boo, Garrett. Garrett had some uh, computer issues tonight, so unfortunately he couldn't join us, which sucks. Just checking my mic. Uh, it sucks, but you know, we're Brit. We're we're um, stealing the Britishness of Britain and saying, um, "Carry on, keep calm, carry on." That's carry it. Carry on, my wayward son. Oh wait, that's yes, a we're Kansas. Band. Yeah, <laughs> that's like the opposite of Britain. <laughs> Britain is class and pretentiousness, and Kansas is corn and tornadoes and. One good song that everyone knows. Hey, Sorry if you're Dust in the Wind is a classic <laughs> song. <laughs> Sorry, two good songs. Uh, no, Garrett, just Jeff, just Emily. For those of our guests who are questioning the husband and the wife. I'm the husband. Jeff's the husband, not Garrett. No, Although- Garrett, and I, Garrett and I are married. <laughs> We're going to make this really confusing now. <laughs> Actually, Jeff is leaving me for Garrett, but we're still going to live together because housing is expensive. Yeah, and that would make a great sitcom. (laughs) I actually think that happens a lot more nowadays where people break up and they still live together. I've actually known people to do that. (gasps) Seriously? Yeah. Actually, I did too. (laughs) I have a friend who started dating her husband while she was still living with her (laughs) ex-boyfriend. Yeah. Are we still talking on tutors? I'm not sure anymore. No, no, this is Emily. Did Henry Chat. do this? No, no, this is Emily Chat. You talk about whatever I want to talk about. <laughs> um, so I've had a lot of free time lately, and there's been a lot of baking going on. Oh yeah. Oh, are you not into the idea of doing Emily Chat? Oh, we can do it. No, okay, fine. <laughs> Just an hour of me talking about what I've been doing with my uh, free time. All lately. these poor listeners and are like, when are they gonna talk about Henry the Eighth again? We never talk about Henry the Eighth. Actually, there is zero Henry the Eighth in the in today's episode. Really? Today is um, Henry the Seventh, but actually, we're talking about the threats to the th- Tudor, t- the threats to the Tudor throne. The threats. Thethel, Thethel, but the Thethor. Thethel, Thethel. No, everything's good. Um, threats to the Tudor throne. Uh, so some of our listeners may know that during Henry the Seventh's early years, in the first um, 14 years of his reign, there were two claimants who rose up and were all like, hey, we are actually royalty. Give us the throne. And I could see it. Because yeah. I feel like during Henry the Seventh, it's like that, that early years of Tudors were like, you know, does he really have claim to the throne? Yeah. And there were still some Yorkists who were a little bit bitter about the way. Some Yorkies. Those York, those dogs. <laughs> um, there were still some York peppermint patties who were a little bit bothered by Henry the Seventh. Even though Elizabeth of Elizabeth of York was clearly a York, but we'll we'll get to her. <laughs> she in a was okay bit. with it. She was fine, for all we know, which is not very much. Uh, no, we are going to talk. There were two people who posed a real threat to Henry and who actually um, caused. I don't even know how know how to put it. They were, weren't really rebellions. They were just kind of. A couple hundred to a couple thousand people who were like, we don't like Henry the Seventh. Mostly Irish. What would you call that? An uproar? Well, they were. Yeah, let's go with uproar. Yeah. There was a little bit of an uproar. It was. Uh, okay, so they are called pretenders to the throne. That's that term. I don't know if it's. 
I don't have a history degree, so I don't know if that's actually accurate. That's the weirdest thing about things like kings and people who like have this right to be the ruler of everyone is there is is like you don't really have much control or say into really gets to have your throne beyond hey i am leader or i'll kill you no and it's okay so i i like that you're talking about that because i've been re-listening to dan carlin's hardcore history which everybody should listen to so i was listening to um the blueprint for armageddon which talks about world it's just like 15 hours of world war one discussion and dan carlin was talking about how being a royal ruler in those days was basically a roll of the dice. Sometimes you got a good one, but then sometimes you got Kaiser Wilhelm II, who had serious <laughs> issues with his mother's family. And then it really sucks when your leader depends on how long he's going to live for. Uh, yeah, and that's why there were a bunch of infant rulers for so long. <laughs> like, let's look at Scotland and how that that worked out. Uh, so... Yeah, Dan Carlin calls it a roll of the dice, and that's really, really accurate. Sometimes you got a great leader who who happened to be, and it wasn't just education because all most of them were given great educations. But um, education doesn't stop crazy. So that's a laugh. Like, what is it today? A lot of people say always like God save the queen kind of thing. I mean, and it's like you're and you're just like you just feel lucky that you're like thank God you're not a crazy who's gonna like yeah, but everyone. she doesn't really have power. Well, I, I, that's what I mean. Like today. It doesn't really mean anything beyond like, oh, you're just you're from a bloodline of like historical mm. significance than yeah. anything. Yeah, it's weird. Then you really actually have control over your country. Yeah, she. Yeah. Because I feel like if nowadays, if someone like if Queen Elizabeth died, or sorry, yeah, Queen Elizabeth II decided like, you know what, I'm gonna take over the whole country again and take and like tell people what to take do. Take over the and world. I feel like people are like, no. No, you're yeah, not. <laughs> no, they got enough. They got enough real democracy going on over there to keep that from happening. Yeah. Um. Which is fascinating. They still. Uh, that's one of those countries that has a monarchy. Oh, don't don't start that discussion because I'm pretty sure there are a ton of people out there who do not like the existence of the. Monarchy, there being a queen and the prince, even though they're total figureheads and they don't actually do anything besides you know have a really gorgeous duchess who has lots of babies. Yep. Go Duchess and Kate. And they're in Star Wars. That was just like an article today. Um, Prince Henry. Henry and Prince William. William <laughs> apparently um, cameo as stormtroopers in the new Star Wars: Last Jedi. Oh, last time it they was Daniel the Craig. <laughs> this time it's the actual princes. Yeah, that's pretty cool. See, that's what I'd use my wealth and in, in royalty for. I'd be like, can I just be in your movie? Mention Henry the Eighth. Like, hey, can I be? <gasps> They're like, yeah, you can fill in for this. Like, guys, he's a gangster. No, he kidnaps Han. I oh, sounds cool. Whole, His name is Jabba. I have this whole <laughs> idea. I have this whole idea. So I want to become, I, I like to say that I want to become famous so I can be on lip sync battle. But now I'm picturing Henry VIII in lip sync battle. And he sings Girls by Beyonce. Oh, fuck. No, he thinks Baby's Got Back. <laughs> My anaconda don't want none. Ew, can you imagine under the eighth twerking? He has the cod piece on. Ew. Oh, God. Yeah, he's totally doing Baby Got Back. All right, let's actually get to this episode's theme. Actual story. topic. Story time with Emily. Mm, so, quick recap. Wars of the Roses. Two families destined to fight forever. Not forever, just for like 30 or some odd years. Lancasters, Yorks, Henry kind of descended from the Lancaster side. And then the Yorks were there too. And they're like, hey, yeah. let's call ourselves Tudors. Wait, what? Um, <laughs> uh, the last Yorks to reign were Edward the Fourth. He had two sons. And then his dick brother, Richard, <laughs> put them in the tower. Hello. And they also had another brother, George. <laughs> Barrel, barrel of wine guy. Oh, yeah. My favorite hero. Who was not a king, but still was the brother of two kings. And if they had died and neither of them had had, he could have been the king. He would have had a quote unquote claim. If you hear that crazy meowing, that is our insane cat, Poe. He just talks a lot. He just wants to be on our. He's filling in for Garrett. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Definitely. 
Um, anyway, that's a recap of the Wars of the Roses, and it is relevant. So, first, I want to talk a little bit about a poor little boy named Edward Plantagenet. He was the third brother, barrel of wine guy, his son. Okay. Okay. So, he had royal blood. Son of wine. Son of wine. <laughs> so, son of wine, he was the Earl of Warwick. Um, now, here's a, a just, this isn't relevant to the story, but it's something that I always wondered about and I finally found today. When you're tainted for treason and and you go to trial and they're like, yes, you're treasonous, off with your head. Yeah. You lose, you and your descendants lose everything your titles your property etc however edward was still the earl of warwick nobody would name a 10 year old earl of war well i'm not going to say nobody but (laughs) he probably wasn't named it independently he had inherited the name from his mother i believe her name was Anne neville and uh she was the daughter of the earl of warwick so she passed the title on to the 10 year old okay so that's just something i i just wanted to clarify for anybody not you who's interested i know you don't care um (laughs) so edward plantagenet had a claim to the throne but henry the seventh popped over to england was all like hey i'm conquering you and marrying your lady and killed richard and then put the earl of warwick a 10 year old in the tower of london so it was really shitty and it was unfortunate and he may have just he may have eventually have been freed based on Henry the Seventh's <laughs> other stuff, but then these two guys who had nothing to do with this poor ten year old popped up out of nowhere and raised holy hell. <laughs> so the first is a guy named Lambert Simnel. Ooh. Original name. I know. No wonder, two. No, this, no wonder he doesn't make it to the king. This has two original names. No wonder it's, they didn't get royalty. They're two <laughs> weird names. Um, okay, so Lambert Simnel was born around 1477. His father was an organ maker. And uh, when he was... Like, I hope the instrument. No, he just like <laughs> killed dead bodies. Like or Burke he killed hair. people. I was just about to make that <laughs> reference. He was like Burke and Hare. <laughs> One person, Burke and Hare. His name so, is Burke Hare. <laughs> so Burke Hare was his father. <laughs> and um, when he was around 10, a priest named Richard Simon, he has a couple different last names, but I'm going with Simon, uh, took him on as a pupil and was like, gee, he certainly does look like a York. Don't know how he knew this. <laughs> Probably from one of those really awful portraits they had back then. And uh, he was like, this could be really convenient. I'm going to be a kingmaker, which is essentially the guy who would put somebody on the throne. You look like, 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 like no. you look a lot like a Russian princess. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He thought he looked like Anastas- Anastasia. Anastasia. Grandma, it's me, Richard of York. Um, So... First, he thought he looked like Richard of York, and he was going to train him in courtly etiquette, and and he gave him, like, a royal education. So, for... uh, That's a lot of work just to convince people, yeah, yeah, sure, he's royalty. Yeah, but... Don't check his bloodline. (laughs) Yeah, but, I mean, if he was royalty, then that priest would have been pretty okay. Um, So... He was going to put him on the throne as the the younger brother of the two princes of the tower. So there was Edward, the one who would have been king, and then his younger brother, Richard. His initial plan was to say Lambert Simnel was Richard and plop him on the throne and then really rule through him. So no one really knew what Richard looked like. No, I mean, nobody knew what anybody... That was the purpose of the royal progresses was so that the king could go around the country and people could actually see their king, not that ugly pig picture from <laughs> last week. That can't be Henry. He's too good looking. <laughs> so, uh, but then, so he was going to have him as Richard Duke of York, but then he heard a rumor, Simon the priest, heard a rumor that Warwick, the 10-year-old, died in prison in the tower. So he was like, well, this is convenient. <laughs> Now I don't have anybody to argue with me. So he figured he'd pass him off as work. Um, so then he spread a rumor that the 
the 10 year old Earl had escaped the tower and um, he went to a random priest in, oh shit, I, I didn't write down where it was. Not London. <laughs> <laughs> this all sounds like a really, like. A, it's like a really bad movie. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking, like a bad, yeah. like family kid, friendly kids movie. I mean, it's Richie Rich. <laughs> So then, oh my God, Macaulay Culkin is him. (laughs) 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 Okay, so uh, now part of what helped this become quote unquote successful was that there were still Yorkists who hated Henry VII. Typical. Right. So um, they supported Simnel. And especially in Ireland, I guess in Ireland, they really fucking didn't like Henry VII. Um, and one of the supporters was the Earl of Lincoln. His name was John De La Pole. And we are going to have an episode about the De La Pole family because they were super interesting. They're the ones. All of them died terribly. <laughs> um, <laughs> Earl, the Earl of Lincoln was the heir of Richard the Third. So, of course, he didn't like Henry the Seventh. Yeah. So he supported him. Um, and in fact, in Dublin, they actually did a whole crowning ceremony. So he was crowned as King Edward the sixth because his brother or hit because Edward the fourth son would have been Edward the fifth. Um, so he was crowned quote unquote as Edward the sixth. There were dozens of them there. There were dozens. <laughs> and, um, other Yorkists started to join the cause, including a woman named Margaret of Burgundy. So there were those three brothers. Well, they also had sisters and one of them was Margaret of Burgundy. So she married um, Philip the Handsome, who was the Duke of Burgundy, and he died. But she's still that name. He was fucking handsome. God, why is his name Handsome Rob? Because he is handsome. (laughs) Because he is handsome. (laughs) Uh, So she married. uh, I mean, it might have been. Philip the Pretty or something, but like Philip the Handsome, he was good looking. Damn, I wish I had that he title. Wa- in my he life. was an ace. Well, <laughs> we we can start calling you Jeffrey the Beard because you've got a luxurious beard. Not biased. It's great for all of those who are listening to this podcast who can't see me. Jeff's nodding. Um, so Margaret of Burgundy, of course, my, I got I got a buddy. Uh, Margaret of Burgundy, of course, didn't want Henry the Seventh on the throne if there was a possible relative of hers that could take it. So she was like, yeah, sure. Of course he's my nephew, the Earl of Warwick. Um, and she sent 2000 mercenaries to Ireland. They were German mercenaries and she sent them to Ireland to help invade England. So they all went to England. There was a short battle and Henry popped up and he was like, fuck all of you. And the Earl of Lincoln was killed. And 28 nobles were tainted, which, do you remember when we were talking about how attainders used to work versus how Henry VII made them work? So attainders used to be a slap on the wrist. Used to be like, don't do that, very bad noble. And they would, they would lose their property. Yeah. But then the king would be like, just kidding, here you go, don't do it again though. <laughs> Henry the Seventh wasn't like that. He was like, "Fuck all of you! You're all attainted, and I want your property and your wealth." So he got everything, and he became wealthy. <laughs> um, the priest was imprisoned for life. He was supposed to be beheaded, but because he was a man of God, he was just imprisoned. And Simnel was, in fact, pardoned. Now he was a kid. Yeah, he was like ten. That's what I say. I was curious how old he was. And Henry the Seventh probably recognized that he was a pawn. He was, just, he was too young to really he was being understand. Just be fed all this stuff by people around him. Yes, so he was just a puppet, really. So Henry pardoned him, and he actually put him to work in his kitchens as the spit boy, the guy who turned the spit. Oh, piss boy, piss over boy. here. And then he became a falconer and. Um, he died around uh, a couple different things. One said between 1525 and 1535. One said late 1534. So I'm going to say 1534, 1535. So after that, bless you, he led a pretty unremarkable life. And it, he was pretty lucky to have escaped any sort I mean, of that's serious That's hilarious. Punishment. He went from 
possibly a, a, a king to uh, you, boy. Can, you can just work in my meat. castle yeah <laughs> where's my beef um, not being dead <laughs> however Simnel ensured Warwick would stay in prison because he had been pretending to be Warwick mm-hmm. um okay so this other guy Perkin Warbeck another original name for you can we name our child Perkin at the restaurant no singular oh Perkin <laughs> Warbeck Simpson. Daddy Warbucks. Nope, Warbeck. Warbeck. Daddy Warbeck. Ew, that sounds gross. Ew, <laughs> daddy has such a gross connotation now. Ew. Okay. <laughs> so Perkin Warbeck was a bigger threat to Henry the Seventh. Um, and shocking he, with a name like Perkins. Perkin. 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 Still, it's not a very threatening sounding first name. What's a threatening sounding first name? Attila the Hun. Yeah. Um, okay, Attila the Warbeck <laughs> <laughs> claimed to be her Perkin the Hun, <laughs> which sounds like a weird, gross thing. Oh, I'm gross. Perkin the Hun, if you know what I mean. What? <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, Perkin the Hun <laughs> wants to play. So uh, Attila the Warbeck claimed to be Richard the S- Richard Duke of York, the younger brother. Real original. I know. <laughs> So, um, no, I'm Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the spit boy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he was born to a Flemish comptroller of the city of Tournay. <coughs> Not that. Oh, okay. And when he was about 10, his mother took him to Antwerp so he would learn Dutch. He had a couple different jobs over there. I don't know where Antwerp is. Don't tell anyone. It's when. The kids do that little dance move. No, it's not. They, they no, twerp. it's not. A, it's what Henry no, does. No, right? no. He please stop. It. You're hurting me. <laughs> uh, I'm probably hurting our fans more. But he was to this. hired by a, a bunch of different people. But then eventually he was hired by merchants who took him to Ireland. Um, so he was hired by merchants who took him to Ireland in 1491 when he was 17 years old. So he learned English while he was there, and um, he claims the Irish Yorkists were all like, oh my, he certainly does look like a York king. And um, obviously the Irish really didn't like Henry VII. So, um, although they probably knew that Henry VIII would be like, I'm king of Ireland now. <laughs> they love that. Look, so, I'm a redhead. I could take over you guys, right? <laughs> so... He went to the court of Burgundy again, where Margaret of Burgundy was, and he claimed the English throne. And actually, coins were minted for him. So I, th- I in those days, I think they would mount, they would mint coins that if like anything legitimize my my reign. It's I'm on a coin. Don't tell our certain president. <laughs> um, so his claim was. That his brother had been murdered in the tower, which everybody in those days assumed the brothers were murdered. But his claim was that his brother was murdered, but he'd been spared because of his innocence. And the murderer made him swear that he would um, he had to swear an oath that he would not reveal who he truly was and he would go in hiding. So he apparently hopped across the pond to Europe. Is hopping across the pond something they only say when they go from Europe to America? Or can you say that when you're traveling across the english channel i feel like the atlantic ocean is a little bit more than just hopping the pond yeah but that's the phrase they use they they say cross the pond to go to england or whatever but i've only heard it in reference to like england and america british fans tell me riddle me this (laughs) what do you call it when you hop from england to europe yeah okay so he, he jumped across the channel and in he claims he was protected by yorkists in europe for quite some time so, um, he went to Ireland and apparently the Irish were like, uh, eh, we've been here before. <laughs> I recognize that tree. I'm not doing this anymore. So they didn't really support him. He just claims they did for a little bit. Um, but the kings of other countries were like, well, fuck yeah, we'll cause trouble for England. So Charles the eighth of France actually received him. Um, but then France had a treaty with England and Henry the seventh was like, you can't keep people who I don't like over there. So Charles had to kick him out of France. Um, and he went back to Burgundy where Margaret publicly recognized him. And she kind of like guided him throughout all this shit. 
Now, she left England before either of her nephews were born. So, like, don't know what her end game was. But um, then Henry VII was like, well, if you're not going to give him up, fuck you. And he imposed a trade embargo on Burgundy, which was really damaging to them. Um, but internationally, Perkin Warbeck was still known as the Duke of York. He was actually invited to the funeral of Emperor the Frederick III by King Maximilian I. What was he before all this? Do we not really know? Uh, oh, shit. I wrote it down, I thought. Uh, nothing. Uh, he, it all started when he was pretty young, around 10, like around 10 or 11. He worked for the merchants and he... His father was the comptroller. So, like, he was a nobody. I just like the idea of these other guys, like, the York is just walking around. The thing is, he looks a lot like a York. He looks like a York. Eh, it's like American Idol, except with <laughs> trying who's going to be king. Uh, Yeah, definitely. So, um, there were, in fact, a couple of supporters in England, of course, that hated Henry. And um, they were arrested and put on trial. Some were, hold on. Yeah, stop drinking wine before we do this. I sound like a fucking lush. So, um, the supporters in England they were condemned to death. Some had their um, sentences commuted to imprisonment and fines, but then some were actually executed. Um, but then in July of 1495, so about ten years after Henry plopped his butt on the throne. Um, funded by Burgundy, by Margaret of Burgundy, Perkin landed in England in Kent. <laughs> I forgot about this part. He was on a ship and 150 of his troops were killed before he even got off the ship. So I'm just picturing the gif of Troy from a uh, community entering the apartment with pizza and everything's on, on fire. fire. <laughs> like that's all i can picture so um that was not good and he just jumped right back on the ship and rode for ireland <laughs> well they this were is like, a bad idea they were like we don't want you here so he went to scotland henry the <laughs> seventh i love this quote henry the seventh uh forgave some of the people in ireland for having i, I don't know talked to perkin warbeck and he is quoted as saying I suppose they will crown an ape next. <laughs> yeah, so at this point, he's probably like, this is getting really old, guys. Yeah, he's like, can we just stick out? <laughs> I'm so tired. I just want to rule this kingdom. So um, Perkin hopped over to Scotland, and Scotland was like, well, y'all will fuck shit up for England. <laughs> so James the Sixth received him and actually married him to a noble lady named Catherine Gordon, and she was the daughter of an earl, and pillows poking me uh the daughter of an earl and they held a tournament to celebrate it and it was you know kind of a cool thing to happen but it was likely just james being like i don't give a shit who you are but you're causing trouble for england and i don't like them so you're good in my book so in september 1496 james prepared to invade england and they um they weren't really there very long so like james and and the and uh perkin warbeck were in england for like three weeks and they just kind of went to different castles and like poked at them and then left and then poked at more castles and then left <laughs> and then at the end of september james is like i'm going home i'm tired <laughs> i'm tired now yeah i like to go home so f a year later maybe less in 1497 he tried to land oh <sighs> he tried to land in cornwall and he actually had an army of 6,000 and he mar marched. To, okay, I underlined this. The city is T A T A U N T O N. And I'm just pronouncing it Tauntaun. <laughs> <laughs> so, I they smell bad on the outside. It's a really smelly city, but it's very warm. <laughs> it's very warm on the inside. How warm is it? <laughs> it's lukewarm. lukewarm. So they marched to Tauntaun. It's probably like Taunton. I bet you 20 bucks it's pronounced Taunton. But I'm saying Tauntaun because this is my fucking podcast. 
So Henry sent an army, but then Warbeck heard a rumor that Henry was with the army, and he was like, fuck this noise, and he fled. He just deserted all of his men. And he was captured in Hampshire, and the ringleaders were executed and fined, and Perkin Warbeck himself was imprisoned after being paraded through the streets so everybody could make fun of him. Because... Henry, like, rolled a D20 for, uh, <laughs> what's it called when you just, like, make fun of someone to death in that game? Mockery. Mockery. He just rolled a, he just critted on mockery. That's a nerd thing for all you nerds out there. You're confused. I, there is actually a name for the, there's actually, in d and there's an attack that's vicious, vicious mockery. Vicious mockery. That's it. <laughs> That's an actual attack in D&D where you Henry, just make your enemy feel Henry bad. Henry <laughs> rolled a 20 on Vicious Mockery. Um, So Henry ch- had a nice little chat with him and he confessed and he was like, oh, I'm not really anybody. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> so he released him and he gave him a position at court. And the stipulations were he wasn't allowed to sleep with his wife and he was under guard. Well, Warbeck tried to escape the guard, so he was like, fuck you, into the tower. 18 months later, he was with actual per, actual um, Warwick, the actual <laughs> Earl. I used to be you once. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a plot for them to escape. And the plot involved burning down the tower, r- running for Flanders, and then putting Warwick on the throne. So... That didn't work. Clearly. And in 1499, they uh, they were clearly captured very quickly. Um, and on November 23rd, which is tomorrow, if you're listening to the podcast on the day we release it, the anniversary of Perkin Warbeck's death. Huh. He was hanged. Um, so unfortunately, even though Warwick probably didn't have anything to do with either of these even the attempted escape he was also put on trial on november 21st which is actually the day we are recording this and he pleaded guilty and one week later he was executed so the rumor is that ferdinand the second and isabella of castile they wouldn't send their daughter um catherine of aragon over to marry prince arthur until these pretenders were taken care of because they posed a threat <laughs> So um, the the theory is that Catherine felt extreme guilt because she was actually friends with the sister of the Earl of Warwick, who was not imprisoned, um, and contributed the troubles in her later life to his death because she thought it was because of her. So that's Catholic guilt for you. I'm just visualizing these guys trying like had to impersonate it's, these guys. I know. It's like you think they like, hey, can I visit them? Get some like <laughs> I kind of do like a shadow guess. I want to do, do some method acting here in this. Um yeah, it's it, none of it was very well done. It was very It just but, sounds so like much like a like a weird like it's a sitcom based in history. So here's the thing. A lot of people are like, "Oh, but Elizabeth of York, if Perkin Warbeck was really her brother, and she would have had a couple of kids by now, and it would have like if she acknowledged that Perkin, Perkin Warbeck really was her brother, then her sons wouldn't have been the ones to inherit the throne. So Elizabeth probably recognized him, but refused to acknowledge him because she didn't want to risk her son's future. But I mean, yes, a lot of a lot of uh, European rulers recognized him as Duke of York, but they just probably wanted to fuck shit up in Europe in England. I didn't give a crap. Do you think there are people still around who are thinking like they should have been king? Yes, there were tons of those. I mean, those happen all the time. But those are the two biggest pretenders to the throne. I like those. Like those are the two biggest ones. I'm sure there are like a few little ones that try to happen, but like just never caught traction like those two did. Does anybody else think they're per- they're they're all of work? I no. am. <laughs> 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 I knew it. I'm surrounded by assholes. <laughs> um. So that's it. <laughs> it's just, I'm just baffled. I'm like, that's actually a thing in history that someone like, I'm gonna try to pass him off as this guy. Yeah, that will work History's really weird. well. 
This 10-year-old? Yeah, he'll totally be ble- believable. History is super weird, <laughs> but it's so fun. I think anybody who thinks history is boring is Clearly is reading the wrong parts. They are reading the wrong parts. They're like, I don't care about treaties. That's fine. Listen to the story about a war that was fought over a bucket. There was a... G- <laughs> That'll tell you. Do you not know that? No. There was a war... There was a war fought over a bucket. This is what happens when Garrett's on the I'm podcast. Just it's like fought over a bucket of what? KFC? They must have been siblings. <laughs> okay, hold on. My Wait. fried chicken. No, my fried chicken. Uh, to battle. The war of the bucket or the war of the oaken bucket was fought in 1325 between right, the This rival- sounds like something is straight up Lord of the Rings now. Between the, the rival <laughs> city-states of Bologna and Modena. It took place in the region... Blah, 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 blah. In northern Italy. Um, it was provoked when Modenese stol- soldiers stole the bucket from a city well. The battle lasts be- about 15 minutes and everyone's like, can I go home now? They, I mean, <laughs> like you're studying the wrong parts of history if you think it's boring because I just told you all about the war of the bucket. Remember, this is a real historical moment. I know. This is not There's a- tons of crazy shit that's happened in history. Like one time an army went and attacked another army and then came back with extra people in its own army (laughs) and like there's just so much uh alexander the great wanted to attack an island and so he built a landmass to get to the island because he couldn't attack it as it was an island he didn't have the strength so he was like i'll just build a landmass to it (laughs) History's fucking great, guys. The Catteries an Island. Let's just build more land to the yeah. island. Let's make a peninsula. Yeah, he did. There is in that <laughs> peninsula still exists. <laughs> like history's fucking bomb. <laughs> so now you learned more about other eras in history. Hooray! Oh my god. Any questions? Any questions? Oh god, David S. Pumpkins. Halloween, we're not allowed to make those jokes anymore. I'm sorry. Thanksgiving. David S. Turkeys. I don't know. Um, Sad Garrett missed this one. Yeah. A little bit shorter one. Oh, wait. That works fine. I have a shout out to make to someone. To two someones. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Go slow. Go slow. Go slow. Um, hey, at Punky Bexter and at Ryan Jessica, you guys are also my best friends. They're tweeting about our show and they're talk- saying how they like they talk back to us as if we're actually friends. <laughs> I'm like, well, you are my friends. And also, if you want to tweet to me, I'll still answer you. So, um, I think that's it for my sh- shout outs, maybe. Anything funny happen on Facebook this week? Not that I can remember. Except, well, except for the people. The marriage thing. That made arguing us laugh. who's married to who in this situation. That made me laugh. <laughs> Maybe we should take a poll. <laughs> no. No. Yes. No. No. We don't need a poll. <laughs> um. Da-da-da-da-da. Okay. I think that's it for this episode then. Okay. Cool. So, hey, find us on Twitter at Tutor Know Her. You can send tweets to me and I'll answer. I'm really the only one doing any social media shit. Um, I'll be sharing shit about Tudor history. Also, we're on Facebook at Tutor I Hardly Know Her. More sharing of stuff, like to engage in conversations, um, share info from other pages so you can find more cool history podcasts and more cool Tudor information and rate and review us on itunes it helps other people find us and it also makes us feel really good about ourselves yay and thank you to everyone who's recently rated and reviewed us we have noticed those have gone up which is really cool um and i think that's it yeah so this until is- no- Going out right before Thanksgiving. Yeah, so happy. You're in the states. If you're in the so states, happy Thanksgiving. Happy holiday. Um, if you're not in the states, I hope you enjoy your Thursday of eating of of not as delicious food and uh, no drama. 
Because really, that's what Thanksgiving is about. Family fighting and turkey. Someone's going to get drunk and angry. <laughs> it's not Henry VIII <laughs> this time. Um, sorry, Perkin Warbeck, for your death anniversary. <laughs> I think that's it. Cool. Until next time. Until next time. Divorce, Divorce beheaded, beheaded, died. Divorce, Divorce beheaded, beheaded, survived. survived. Goodbye. Goodbye. See, so you can do it in sync when Garrett's not here. Much easier.